So at this point, I feel like we've adequately set the stage for this course. So let's get into the actual medicine. In this video, we're going to be talking about the differential diagnosis of chest pain, and I will be arranging it by the different systems that can cause chest pain. So the, the main idea around this is to show you that you have to have an approach when you're thinking about what the differential is for a certain symptom. And when it comes to something like chest pain, the way that I like to think about it is I like to think about what is in the actual chest cavity, your thoracic cavity, that can give you chest pain. So if you look at my fantabulous drawing here, this right here are your lungs. So these are the things that are in your chest, um, your, in your chest cavity, in your thoracic cavity. So your lungs here, your heart here, your esophagus, your stomach, and also this right here is supposed to be your ribs and the muscles in between them. If we take the anatomical approach, that gives us a system where we can think about the, the symptom logically. So something can be going on with the heart, it can be going on with the lung, it can be going on with the esophagus, the muscles, everything in that area, the skin as well. And so if we think of it in that way, it'll organize our differential and we can focus on what are the subtleties of that patient's presentation that, can, that we can use to then choose the right diagnosis or develop a differential diagnosis and rank things that are more likely versus not as likely. The first thing that people think about when they think of, a, of chest pain is a heart attack. So we'll focus on the heart first. So when we are talking about a heart attack, we're talking about a blood supply problem. Um, notably, we're talking about the blood supply to the actual cardiac tissue, the heart tissue. And so if we look here, these this branching vessels are on the outside of the heart and they get their blood from the aorta. As the blood leaves the left ventricle, so the part, the last part of the heart before the blood goes to the rest of the body, it, it pushes out of the left ventricle into the aorta here. At the stem of the aorta, there are little openings where the, the blood actually flows um, out, instead of going into the aorta to the rest of the body, it actually flows into these cardiac vessels. And so these vessels supply all of the heart and they supply, they are what enable the heart to actually keep functioning. So a heart attack would, would happen when you have a supply and demand problem, when you don't have enough supply to actually perfuse the heart and give the heart enough um, blood supply, oxygen, nutrients to function. And so what ends up happening if we if we look at the vessel itself? So if this is our vessel right here, this is one of these vessels um, of the heart. If for whatever reason you have a a blockage, let, let's say you have some sort of blockage here, the forward flow of blood is now stopped, and because the forward flow of blood is stopped, nothing is going past that. So if we think of blood flowing in through the vessels and in perfusing the actual cardiac tissue, we can look at the blood stopping about right here, which means that this entire territory of heart is now in danger because it's no longer getting blood. So we're saying that anything that stops the forward flow of blood within the coronary arteries will cause a heart attack. So what are some things that can cause that, that disruption? So the two things that we typically think about is a plaque formation and a clot. And so let's talk about plaque formation first, because that will tie into angina. Now, when we think of plaque formation, we, we're usually thinking about people with high cholesterol, that the plaque starts to deposit within the vessels and cause a narrowing of the artery. And so um, angina happens when you have a decreased amount of flow through that vessel. And usually it's because of a narrowing. And so let's define these terms. Angina is chest pain because there is not enough blood going to the heart. And a myocardial infarction is what happens when uh, you don't have enough supply going to the heart for a period of time that now is causing heart muscle tissue death. And so angina, if, if it is unstable and it starts to progress and have a complete occlusion of this vessel so that nothing is going through, will cause an MI. So angina is a function of supply and demand. So if there is not enough blood going past this blockage and feeding the, the more distal or the more further down parts of the heart, you're going to have parts of the heart, you know, in danger of dying and seeing uh, because they're seeing less blood flow. And so what are some classic 
causes of angina chest pain? Well, it's something that we've been talking about before where where somebody comes in and says, hey, doc, I uh, I walk three three blocks and now my chest is starting to hurt and it, it, it hurts when I start um, walking faster or if I want to do a light jog and then as soon as I rest and give myself 10, 15 minutes, it gets better. Well, exercise is something that increases demand. And so with the increased demand, you you aren't able to put enough blood flow past this blockage to actually supply the heart with what it needs because the heart when it starts when you start to exercise if you think about it your heart starts to beat faster because it needs to get more blood out to the rest of the body because the the muscles and other tissues of the body are requiring more energy and so your heart's beating faster it's working harder and this blockage prevents you from actually getting enough blood supply to the areas that of the heart past the blockage and so anginal chest pain will usually occur when when you are um, initially, like, let's say you, you would be able to walk 10 blocks without a problem and you, would, you wouldn't have any chest pain. Now, as you start to build up more of a narrowing here, now you can only maybe do eight and then you start to feel some chest discomfort. And as you increase the narrowing, you now have such a small opening here that hardly any blood is able to go through. So you start to progress from having chest pain with exertion, having chest pain with activity, to having chest pain with minimal activity, to having chest pain at rest. And so that is the progression of angina, from something that is stable, you know kind of when you're gonna get the chest pain, to something more unstable where it's like, yeah, I'm having chest pain all the time, we really need to take care of this. And so the way to take care of this is to put a, a stent between here and push this artery open. And so that stent is gonna stay in that artery to make sure that there's blood flow going past that blockage and so that nothing actually blocks the area. And so people, if you think of, if you think of people that had heart attacks or people that had chest pain and then they get a cardiac catheterization, what happens is they put, the, put a, a um, catheter in through one of the, the main veins, snake it up to the heart and just insert that that um, catheter into where that blockage is and opens it up. So what are the symptoms of angina? Well, you're gonna have chest pain or chest pressure and that pressure is gonna get worse with activity, so exercise, and it's gonna get better with rest or nitroglycerin. Nitroglycerin is a medication that we give to patients um, that we know have um, chest pain from blockages like this because the nitroglycerin will cause a dilation of the coronary vessels. And so what ends up happening is even though you have this blockage here, now if you dilate those vessels, instead of being narrow like this, you're going to be able to have more room because the vessel dilates. And it gets better with rest because you no longer have that that increased demand on the heart. Now, the chest pain in angina will cause radiation sometimes to the arm, the neck, the jaw. Um, but it's it's important to remember that you can have any type of symptom, and it can be related to ang angina. Um, like I had mentioned in a previous video, a lot of the studies that we've done to categorize chest pain were done in uh, white males, and so. Females, elderly patients have different, uh, different manifestations of their chest pain. And you can also have some shortness of breath, some nausea, some vomiting, some sweating. And so if we compare the symptoms of angina to the symptoms of a myocardial infarction, they're more or less the same. The only difference is that a myocardial infarction, the symptoms won't get better because your cardiac tissue is actively dying. And so you have to intervene pretty quickly. So when we think of a, a myocardial infarction, how is it that we get to the actual clot or the blockage itself? Well, it happens because of the plaque um, as well. But what ends up happening, instead of that progressive narrowing that we get with, um, with angina, uh, what happens is that there's a disruption in the actual lining of of the vessel itself. And so if the vessel lining is disrupted and now you have plaque being exposed like it is right here, this is very thrombogenic. And what thrombogenic means is that 
you, you are going to form a clot there. The, the platelets that are flowing through the bloodstream are, are very sticky, and they can stick very easily to the surface. And so once platelets start to aggregate, they, they form this matrix and form this clot. And as that clot um, grows, you have eventually complete occlusion of this vessel. And so with that complete occlusion is where you have that sudden onset crushing chest pain that isn't getting better and is um, what causes a lot of death in the United States. And so because that lining, that, that plaque was exposed and you had this clot formation here, you now disrupted all blood going forward and then there is no blood going here. So if you look at our diagram of the heart here, let's say that clot formed right about there. So blood is able to come here, it can go down this way, it can go down this way, but nothing is going down this territory. And so all of this is now actively dying. And so that portion of the heart is, um, is what is actively dying. And so what, what we can do for that is we can get an EKG. So if a patient is coming in with crushing substernal chest pain that feels like um, that, that is 10 out of 10, it feels like he's gonna, he feels like he's gonna die, and we get an EKG, because this cardiac tissue is now dying, it disrupts the way that the that electrical signals are processed through the heart. And so the the waveforms that we see on the EKG change. And so that brings us to the type of studies that we would need for angina and for a myocardial infarction. The big one that we just mentioned was an EKG. The EKG is going to show us something called an ST segment elevation for an MI, or if it's angina and it's not causing actual death of the cardiac tissue, you can see some small changes like T wave inversions. Um, if it if it gets worse, you can get instead of the ST segment elevations, you can get depressions, or it can look completely normal. And so, it within the EKG, it'll help us stratify how bad this blockage is. Is it bad enough where the cardiac tissue is actually dying or is it not really causing any issues but that that portion of the heart is at risk of dying? And so um, it's a good way of, of stratifying what you need to do. Now the next thing that we, we get is um, labs and the big lab that we now check is the troponin. The troponin is a enzyme that is present in heart cells. In the, in the muscle cells. And so if you think about it, if cardiac tissue is dying, if those cells are dying, well, that cell membrane is now opening up and you are, aren't able to keep the contents of that cell inside the heart. So once this, this membrane opens up, you have the spillage of the contents, you have the spillage of the troponin within the, the bloodstream. Sorry, I tried to, I was going to draw it for you, but I realized it's probably not a good idea. <laughs> so so as the troponin um, seeps into the, the bloodstream, you're going to see it in the serum. So if you, if you draw the patient's blood um, when they arrive to the ER and you see the troponin elevated, well, that patient probably has um, heart tissue that is damaged and you're spilling those contents in. So that increases our, our suspicion of something like a myocardial infarction where the actual, blood the actual heart tissue is dying. And... The last, the last study that I'm going to talk about here is the chest x-ray. The chest x-ray is not going to tell us anything about the heart attack. If, if the patient had such a severe heart attack that the heart isn't functioning very well and you're having a buildup of fluid, then yeah, you can probably see that on the chest x-ray, but that would be more of like a, a flash pulmonary edema, meaning there's fluid building up in the lungs very quickly because of uh, overt heart failure. So the chest x-ray, what it's intended for is to show us, is there maybe another reason why this patient is having chest pain? Are they having a pneumonia? Are they having um, a pneumothorax where the, the lung is more or less punctured and you're having air being pushed out into the, into the actual cavity and compressing the lung? And so, um, or something like an aortic dissection, which we'll talk about in a bit. So the chest x-ray is good for really, uh, for seeing if there's any other causes of the, the chest pain, but it's not good for ruling in a, a heart attack. Having said that, everybody that comes into the ER that has chest pain, they're going to get a chest x-ray. So I kind of went a little bit out of orders, but what are some of the physical exam findings that you will find on somebody that, 
that has a heart attack, um, like angina, uh, an MI or angina. So we kind of talked about that before where we said that they might have um, some sweating and so they'll, they'll be diaphoretic, um, which is the same thing as profusely sweating. Um, they, they can have a generally normal exam um, where they, they're not, they're not tachycardic, meaning their heart's not beating too fast. They don't have any murmurs or anything like that. Um, and, and their lungs can sound pretty clear. Also, along with the, um, the relatively normal physical exam, you can also have pretty normal vitals. Um, when the vitals start to tank, meaning your, your blood pressure starts dropping, or your oxygen saturation starts dropping, you're in trouble because that means that you're no longer able to, your heart's no longer able to actually pump blood forward. And so for most of the heart attacks that I see in the hospital, the vitals are more or less okay. You might have a little bit of high blood pressure. So to summarize, angina and myocardial infarction are both a supply and demand issue. Angina is when you have a if you're not able to actually supply the heart with blood that it needs, you start having chest pain that gets better. Um, usually it's worse with exertion, better with rest. And myocardial infarction is when the actual tissue starts to die. The symptoms are more or less the same, where you have chest pressure that's worse with activity, better with rest or nitroglycerin. It can radiate to the arm, the neck, the belly, the jaw. Um, so any of that, those symptoms where they're getting worse with exertion, better with rest, those are all suspicious for a heart attack or angina. Now, you can also have other associated symptoms like shortness of breath, nausea, vomiting, sweating. Um, the studies that you would want to do for both of these are an EKG to see if there's any electro electrical abnormalities within the heart, and to get a troponin also to see if there's any breakdown of cardiac tissue, and to look at an x-ray to see if there's anything else in the chest cavity that can be causing these symptoms. Now, the vitals and the, the physical exam can more or less be normal. So it, it's important to do those and to pay attention to those because they can clue you in onto other things that can, that can be causing the patient's chest pain.